Where is she? Oh, hang on, what's this? Go to quarters. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't totally want to ruin the game experience for you. We, we had to <laughs> leave in a bit of the... not change it completely. Ah. If you're going to uh, do this on the uh, on the test machines, you can read this text here and be all very informed about it. But I'm not bad with it because I'm a lead player and I know how to operate this. So now we are. Fuck. <laughs> Nothing ever works here. We love being on the bleeding edge, just like Chris was talking about. We're the first game to 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 use geometrics. And a lot of people would say, you know, you shouldn't expose yourself to risk and you just should use only proven technologies and proven stuff. But it's never been our style and that's why we had programmers checking in changes at like 9 a.m. this morning. So uh, this is my captain's quarters. This is my pod, which has just been opened. And, uh, and this is the pod exit room. Aha. Uh -huh. See, my vitals are really good. So this is my personal personal space, and uh, I have one within every station. So this is a Galente station, so these are a Galente captain's quarters. Regardless of my own character's race, I'm going to get a Galente captain's quarters, because they don't need to provide with those. And uh, what's this? Oh. Protein delicacies. I've heard that they're very tasty. And uh, long limb rose over here. It's very good. And uh, ah, here's, a, here's a room I can like, dress up in. It's supposed to have a mirror, but, uh, but it doesn't have one yet. So should we uh, maybe uh, put some... Oh, what's this? <laughs> nice. As you can see, he's got some sockets on his back. That's from his, uh, his pod. Let's uh, change his hair. Oh. <laughs> there you are. But look, see, see when it gets close to the wall. This is using uh, screen-based ambient occlusion, which is a cool stuff that's, that's used in a few games. See, as he gets closer to the wall, see, he's casting a soft shadow on the wall, and he casts a soft shadow on the floor. It's not the like razor sharp, harsh shadow that you see in other games, but it's actually the environment is kind of reacting softly to stuff in it. And this is totally dynamic. This is a hologram of Kaldari Prime. Remember my origins, and this is a Kaldari Akura character, and uh, that's one of the costumes. Nice. Ah, yeah, this guy. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the promenade. So, this is the promenade, the big public space. It's supposed to be full of people, but I'm the only one on the server. Oh, there's someone. Down there. Oh, there, there. 
and there's there's some AI running the crowd simulation there behind. So uh, in the promenade, I can go to these elevators and uh, go back to my captain's quarters or to my corporation offices. I can watch the news. This is kind of nice. Oh, that does not look good. <laughs> I hope it's not this station. <laughs> This is actually quite cool. See, notice how the, how the character, I spin the camera around and I go to, to my character and I spin it around, but if I'm behind the character, the camera actually shifts to his shoulder and becomes an over the shoulder camera. Because I hate when you like zoom in and look staring at somebody's back or somebody's neck, it's so stupid. So, so it actually like dollies back and then zooms in so you can like check out details and stuff. And we're walking. Uh, we realized very early on that walking on its own isn't that much fun. So uh, in the promenade, and we're going to have more of these, we've got uh, moving walkways. You see them down here, and they're uh, like the ones in the, in the uh, airports. So you move faster with them. And this is interesting. Sorry if I'm using touch plots here. Okay, uh, is Otter in the room? Go to the first promenade. Where is the bar? Go to the old promenade, this one. I want to go to the bar. Ah, very nice. Okay. Ah, see, <laughs> so the promenade. Uh, it's kind of like a mall. It's uh, it's uh, it's an integral part of the of the station. So this is a Galantian promenade, and, it, and you see the style of the Galantian kind of engineering at its best. And these here are, are sockets. These sockets are rented out to players. So when walking the stations opens, and uh, and you can go in there, uh, all you're going to see are your captain's quarters and these promenades and basically not, nothing else, because no one has rented out a socket. So this is an unused socket. But here, somebody's actually rented out a socket and uh, gotten a hold of a blueprint for a Minmatar bar. And they built the bar, uh, procuring the resources that they needed to build the bar, and uh, then rented out the socket and the bar out the socket. And you just have to pay upkeep for the bar. It's like renting a corporation office. So if you uh, can't afford it anymore, or if it's a really popular, if it's Gita 4.4 and you can't really afford it, then uh, you're just going to drop it and somebody else is going to rent it. And there's a limited amount of these sockets in uh, each promenade. So, so the most popular stations are probably going to be... Oh. <laughs> Does it look right? Oh, here we are. Uh, yeah. Now it's complaining that e-voice isn't an enabled. This machine isn't hooked up to the internet, but the demo machines are actually hooked up to the internet that you're going to be able to use over there. And there you're going to be seeing that we have e-voice, and it's uh, actually spatialized. So if somebody's standing on your left, you're going to hear him. And uh, we had that exploit delete hack working uh, a couple of days ago. I think it still works on the demo machines. So if somebody's talking, you actually see his lips moving. Uh, it's not full lip sync, but it's kind of like a French movie or German big in uh, France and Germany. Uh, and, and what's also cool about it is that you've got voice fonts, which uh, allow you to change your voice dramatically. And I strongly encourage you to try it. You can even deepen your voice. And there are voice fonts that are like male to female and female to male. And I, I noticed uh, Jade Constantine here just earlier. And I'm sure that he's, he slash she is going to have fun with that. So where am I? Oh, here's the bar. Hello there. <laughs> mm. Nice. It's supposed to have some music. Uh, I checked this 
kaart er hier. Kaart nothing hier men als een party of the night and they track the uh, place empty. Okay, that's typical. Okay, I'll go upstairs and then. So, so he's an NPC, he's an NPC bot, and if you own an establishment like this, you can actually rent NPC bots. You can rent a bartender, or you can rent someone else, an exotic dancer or someone else, and, and place them in your own establishments, and you can author the, the dialogue trees for the uh, avatars. So uh, you can have the avatars accept uh, items or money, and give items or money, and you can customize your little kind of state graph so that you could, for instance, have this guy ask for money and he would give you whiskey in exchange. Or you could have him ask for a blueprint and he would give you, I don't know, a title. So, uh, that's nice. So, what's happening here? This dancer was actually dancing like a couple of minutes ago, but uh, it seems like there's an error in the build. She's supposed to dance, like I encourage you strongly to check that out in the build. <laughs> He's liking it, at least. <laughs> and he, and this guy, there as well. This is a kumak, I believe. It's actually a placeable object, and all of these tables and chairs are... are <laughs> wow. Yeah? Are you sure? Okay, let's distribute it, yeah. I really can't understand why this happened. It never, ever had an issue with this. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Stop it. Be still. There you are. Then lead that to music. That's nice. So it's missing some people. Yeah, yeah, his hair changed. No, no, no. Stay put. Ah. So, what are these then, you might ask? These. I mean. So, uh, so these are uh, examples of the mini games that you can play. This one is called Sec Wars. And uh, so, what are these mini games? These are tactical strategy games that you can play within uh, walking stations. And this table is actually just an object that's placed there. And you can buy it and install it at your own bar or put it in your captain's quarters. And what this one has is uh, you can play against the AI or you can play against other uh, characters. 
And uh, if you're playing against other characters, you can bet on it. Uh, right now, you can only bet Isk, but we're hoping to be able to make some sort of contract so you can put your ship on the line or your clothes or uh, something else. And uh, okay, let's, let's start. So, uh, maybe some of you have seen a game like this or a game eerily similar to this. So, uh, it's about conquest and uh, we are red, we are the red units and my, my quest is to uh, kind of conquer the whole territory. Now, my areas are at each area that of my color that has two or more tiles adjacent to each other gets a base. And uh, if I have a base, the base accumulates income and once I've got 10, isk or whatever, I can afford a unit. So these are my units here. Uh, these are just basic kind of foot soldiers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna conquer, conquer this hex here and see, now I've got this area here. And it's gonna give me then an income of four for each round and my unit costs two and it's a soldier. And, and uh, I'm gonna just uh, go in and try to win this. Actually, didn't get much sleep last night, so I'm really worried that I'm gonna totally lose myself in playing this game because I'm really obsessed with winning it. There, so I, I merge these and I'm gonna really screw the AI over. Damn you, AI! The important thing is that we don't take the AI and connect them all together. <laughs> and turn. Oh, okay. So the, move, the, the units that are spinning are my units that I can actually move. So uh, I, I can also drag a unit on top of another unit and upgrade it. Ah, that's nice. A mech. And with a mech, I can conquer other units or kill other, like, characters. And uh, then I'm gonna go here and do like this. And uh, maybe this, I'm gonna end my turn. Okay. Here, stay here. Okay, it's tricky. <laughs> I actually can't promise you that I'm gonna win this game. It's, uh, I, I set the AI to very stupid, so it should <laughs> shouldn't be that hard. You can get a bit tricky. Okay, I'm just gonna upgrade this. I'm gonna show you the fancy units. Ah, it's got a nice walker. This walker here, he can kill a mech but the mech can't kill a mech and so on. Uh, but I'm using the mech to jump here, and then I'm gonna come right here, and upgrade this one, and connect these two, see, uh, that's very nice. But the, the, they might cut me off. Okay, that's cool. And I'm gonna, like, I'm actually winning. This is nice. Well, you, you get the general gist of it. I'm not gonna go through the entire round of this. You see, I've been playing for three minutes. This particular round has been playing for two minutes. And in the graphs here, you can see the progression of how each uh, player is doing. I'm red, I'm not doing that well. Green is doing pretty well. And uh, I can actually undo, and if I really give up. Uh, oh, that's nice. Oh, here it is, yeah. <laughs> the health menu, very important. And uh, I'm gonna go full retard and uh, see if I can upgrade this unit and end my turn. Oh, AI player number two wants to surrender. Wimp. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up a base here that's gonna protect my tiles, then you can't attack my tiles. And I'm gonna upgrade this mech here to the Uber lead jet. And that kills everything and it kills my enemy bases but it costs 54 isk each round, and I only make 33 isk each round, so the next round, all of my units are going to starve. Ah, they're, they're dead. So, my greed got the better of me, but uh, I'm not gonna play the whole thing through, but it's, it's a brilliant game. I can totally, uh, we've actually been playing this game a lot, and it's really impacted and hurt the, our, our developers' ability to program <laughs> demo. <laughs> because it's like highly addictive, and even playing against the AI is good, but against another human player is just plain scary. Okay, see, I, I'm just gonna, no, 
Let's, let's play this one. Let's see what that one's done. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I so, I give up. I'm humiliated. The table closes. Uh, what else? So that's basically our uh, vertical slice of uh, walking in stations. Uh, what I didn't show you and what's going to be in there is, of course, character customization. It's crafting. It's manufacturing of these environments. It's the customization of these environments, the customization of the lighting and the customization of the, of the characters, the placement of uh, props. And, uh, and the renting of it. I didn't show you the corporation offices, which have uh, both uh, uh, meeting rooms where you can have, where you like can meet other corporation members, and the foyer where you can invite basically everybody and rent an NPC bot and uh, pre-program that with some recruitment uh, talks, like hi, welcome to our corp, and here is some spiced wine. Have a nice day. And because you could have that bot give stuff to people, and with the combination. You've got corporation offices and bars in many different stations. You could essentially create small missions where bots give stuff to people and other bots require that same stuff. Or, or you could just have them do the dirty work for you, talk to the noobs and have them like, so you, so you can't be bothered with like talking to the noobs and having them do like crap for you and just have them talk to the bots. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, but uh, uh, one thing I should mention is. Uh, as with the game itself, we are building this with you. So, so we're going to release this. Uh, we're we're going to alpha it and beta it, and we're going to release it, and we're going to monitor it very closely, and uh, and monitor, of course, the forums and your just your reactions to it, and the play styles and the patterns. And this will grow, and this will. So, so you don't have any combat in here, and you don't have any. Uh, there's a lot of things that you don't have in here right now, but. Uh, we only see it as the stepping stones is in just making Eve uh, this science fiction simulator extraordinaire that we want it to be, and uh, and and but we want to do it gradually because we don't want to totally upset the balance of the game. Flying in space or fish, as we call it today, uh, is is still the most important part of Eve. It's it's where all of the gameplay happens. It's where the dynamic uh, balance uh, cannot be disturbed. So. I've talked about this before. If I could have a teaspoon in here as a noob and then run up to some alliance leader and then out with a teaspoon and, and kill him, that, uh, would invoke the teaspoon effect, which uh, essentially would totally upset the whole balance of the game. So uh, th th that's one of the reasons that we're like moving it into this gradually. Now, uh, can I do something? I totally recommend you get this menu here. That's really cool. You can like. Got macros, and you can like skill up your character and do stuff. <laughs> Go to the custom scorters. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, I think that's the end of my uh, my demo, and uh, we have a uh, few minutes. <laughs> I managed to make it small enough. A few minutes for Q&A. Uh, I don't know how you were supposed to do this. Ian probably has an idea. So what do people do, like queue up or raise their hands? Yeah, sure, okay. So, uh, Q&A, any questions? No, it's okay. You had music there, the people were sexed. Is it still a case of in-game music supplied only, or can, say, out of EVE um, in, on internet radio stations be used as the background? Sorry, the music? Music. Is it fixed from the internal, or can there be an external playlist or an external source? The jukebox. Currently, it's, uh, it's fixed for in-game client, but the, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, playing back different files and playing back MP3s, but we can't commit to it right now. But uh, that would be part of an expansion that wouldn't be walking stations, but probably the uh, the uh, next expansion that we do. The karaoke expansion, right. Thank you. 
Um, I, I really don't feel comfortable with the sh third person look and the shoulder look. Right. Uh, because in space you explain it with the camera drones, so obviously I don't have camera drones here with my avatar. Why don't you give us first person view? Uh, it might be nano drones, it's the future. But uh, it, ma it makes me really feel uncomfortable to watch an avatar walk instead I, of being immersed in the true. avatar. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry for that. But uh, be noted that this is a uh, working alpha. It's a prototype. We actually, in our initial designs, we plan to have you mouse wheel and then scroll and then pop into your head. If Great. You, if you like, take your, take, your, take the camera like this. It's probably going to be like that. Uh, yeah. It's just going to undergo some user testing, and we will figure out what's the best feel for it. Thanks. Your concerns are noted. Hands. Who? Um, I remember last year at FanFest, um, there was, of course, you know, you, you demoed what you had on emulation as well. Mm -hmm. And there was, you know, ideas were being tossed around, such as, you know, standings having effect and um, playing certain animations, you know, so that if you had a high standing, people would look at you revered or whatever. Is that still the case? That is still the case. So, like I said, this is still a vertical, a vertical slice, and uh, we haven't integrated the, uh, the look-at system, where you actually, if somebody enters a room and if he's of a high standing or stature, your character's focus or gaze is shifted towards him, and the reactions of avatars are implicitly controlled by the by things as standings in-game, or, in, or for instance, uh, racial attributes. That is still the case. It's on our scrum backlog, but uh, it's not in this. Uh, I was wondering, is this plan for just Empire high sec systems uh, stations, or is this going to be low sec? And if it's low, uh, low sec and zero, it's outposts. Mm -hmm. If you're trapped in an outpost that's recently been taken over by another alliance, if you're in another alliance's outpost, will you still be able to have your bar? Are you still just kind of stuck in there with your stuff, and you can't leave and come back? It's a good question. It's uh, I can't give you the perfect answer to it. But uh, what, uh, what happens if you have a bar fitted, for instance, in, in, a, in a station, and, and uh, for some reason you can't have it fitted anymore, it's just going to be chucked to your uh, hangar uh, along with its fitting. So it's, pr it's like a fitted ship. And, and, and you can put it on your, on your cargo and just fly somewhere with it. Uh, yeah, yeah, the outpost is you, we will burn that bridge when you come to it. <laughs> Anymore? About the uh, graphics technology, will yeah. it also be poured over to the space action, all those, uh, like, the, like the radiosity technology and stuff like that? Or will it just stay in emulation? Uh, the radiosity will probably not be moved over to the space action, because uh, in space, lighting is pretty hard uh, or harsh, and it makes sense to have uh, harsh uh, shadows. And uh, we feel that uh, the improvements that we did with the ships in Trinity are, are sufficient for the time B. We are, uh, in our future expansions, we're going to be focusing on, on making the uh, planets and the nebulas and uh, world objects look better, and, and then move on to walking stations. So uh, you're probably not going to be seeing radius the lighting within space. And, uh, well, the only thing that actually bounds radius the lighting in space would be the planets, but uh, w there would be different methods for that, and, and we wouldn't require the full system that uh, Chris and I guys at your medics have to make that happen. Uh, the infamous 10 ton ammo video ended with a scene where you went down to the hangar and saw your ship. Is that sort of still in game or is there a, uh, has that been dropped? Well, going to the hangar is, is not a high priority right now. So, so what we have is like we have a ton of, of, of things that we want to do, some of, some of which are half implemented, some are more implemented, some are more fully implemented like this one. And currently we uh, felt that uh, going to your hangar unless there was a game design reason for it other than seeing your ship we didn't fully justify putting a lot of resources in it because it's fun going into your hangar once and take admiring your ship and like oh my god that's so big but uh, but then you know after you've done it once uh, are you gonna do it again uh, maybe once you get a new ship but uh, with the uh, kind of work that goes into building uh, an environment, we would prefer them to be more reusable than that. So uh, it's not high on the priority list, but I can't tell you whether it's going to be in or not in the first release. Um, all the items you showed, like the props, are they all going to be player manufactured? Yes. And so is it going to be like a, a possible profession as a person who creates all of these stuff? Sure, sure. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, you might 
get. Some items are more rare than others, and some might be NPC drops, and uh, it's all just part of you know the existing item system within Eve. So uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, what what time do you have to finish, Dwarf? Uh, in one minute. Okay. Next question. Over there, someone. Okay. okay. The man with a funny top. <laughs> Um, the games you're going to be implementing, will they be only the strategy games or are you going to bring in things like poker and that? Mm -hmm. Good question. We had poker running uh, a couple of months ago in, inside this, uh, Tax Result and Poker. But uh, it didn't have fancy graphics, uh, but it was really cool. We changed the, 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 the racial card. You know, it wasn't spades and aces, it was like Amar and, and Mimotar. And, and it, was, it was quite cool. But uh, uh, we might just as well, put it in there, or rename it, or reskin it. Uh, what, I, what I feel important about, well, poker is a strategy game, isn't it? Uh, uh, what I like about having strategy games in there, rather than reflex-based games, is that Eve is a thinking man's game, and, uh, and, uh, and it's kind of slow-paced, and uh, kind of, yes. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you put a lot of thought into your actions, and, and also, uh, I, I prefer to have multiplayer games in there rather than uh, single player because the games we play in there are, are essentially uh, a way to bring people closer to each other and to have fun without having to go just into zero zero and have your capital shit blown up. Okay, Tov, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. <laughs>